In this video, I'm gonna show you some basic embroidery stitches. And you'll need a few things. When you embroider, you'll have your fabric that you want to be embroidering, but you also wanna always have a fabric behind it. So I would always put, it doesn't matter what the fabric is, these two match because these are just scrap fabrics that I'm using to show you. But normally this might be, you know, a, a printed fabric or, and I'll always have something in the back just to help the embroidery give it a little bit more um, structure. Um, you might need a hoop. I usually use hoops. I know that some people who embroider do not use them. And that's okay too. So you'll want to try out probably both ways until you decide what your preferences are since we're all just a little bit different and what we like and don't like. I always use DMC number eight. I do not like embroidery floss, um, so I don't use it. But just keep in mind that floss is something that a lot of embroideries do use. So again, you'll want to try both. You'll need a thimble, you'll need a pair of snips. With the number eight thread, I always use a sashiko needle. One thing about the needle that I've heard complaints about is that it's such a big needle. So it puts a larger hole in your fabric, which I've never noticed it being a problem, but you'll have to decide that for yourself too. Um, so a lot of preferences in embroidery. Just to get started, you'll take your embroidery hoop, you'll unscrew it. This inner part with the part without the clasp goes in the back. You'll put your fabric over it. The hoop part with the clasp goes on the top. You'll fit it on just like that and then you'll tighten this screw. And ideally this part is really taut without any slack. But if it does get slack, you know, you just kind of pull it out um, and then tighten it some more. So they always say to cut an arm's length of thread but mine's probably a little bit more than an arm's length. Um, you'll, you'll, the more you do this, the more you know what your preferences are. To get started, you will make a little knot. So just like that. Then you wanna make a second knot. And this time, you'll just move that little loop until it gets right on top of your original knot so that you get a nice bigger knot. You shouldn't have any trouble getting the thread into this needle. It has a much bigger eye. Also, um, a lot of embroiderers um, won't start with this knot. They'll take this other piece and they'll move these pieces together uh, like this. And then they'll knot off these two together. That way you're working with a double strand. So just decide for yourself if you want a thicker piece of thread that may be exactly what you want. For this video though, I'm just gonna show you the way I usually do it most of the time. And we're gonna start out with just um, a basic running stitch first. So it's just like with hand quilting or chunky binding. Um, you'll come up in the back and pull through to the front. You should feel that knot catch. It's gonna look like that. And then you're just gonna go up and down. I didn't put my thimble on. Put your thimble on. Um, you'll just go up and down in the fabric, getting your stitches the length you want. And then when you pull the needle through, they'll come through like that. That's, that's typically the way I do it. Um, although some people will want to do it one at a time. You can better maneuver where your line is going if you do it one at a time. So it's just a constant in and out. Just make sure that when you come into the hoop, you always go out of the hoop. And when you go out to the hoop, you always go in. When I was teaching my daughter how to embroider, um, something a mistake that she kept making that kept frustrating her was that she would go out of the hoop and then she'd sometimes accidentally bring it back to go in. But you have to go back in the same way you went out. So it's, so you're always, so you're never coming from the back and then flipping over this way. If you went out the back, you're coming back from the back. So just like that. When you want to tie off, you'll always slip this through a stitch or stitches. You'll pull it completely through once, send it back through that same stitch, make the loop, put your needle through it and tie off. And that's exactly what you'll do one more time. Just like that. And then I usually cut it maybe a half an inch. So that is the running stitch. 
this next stitch is called a back stitch and this is probably the stitch I use more than anything it's really good for um, if you're doing greenery if you're doing um, marks on a leaf or any kind of any kind of sturdy line that you want to make I really like the back stitch so you'll start the same way you come from the back into the hoop let your knot catch go ahead and take your first stitch all right and when you come back in you're gonna come a little distance away, like that pull it through and when you put it back in, you want to put it back right there where that last stitch left off. Just like that. Do it again, a few bits away. And then come back in. This line can go wherever you want it to go. It can go straight, it can loop around, it can do anything you want. Um, I will say that if you're going to go around a curve or if you're going to curve your line, you take smaller stitches and you kind of slowly get that curve in it. The shorter your stitches, the, the more that curve looks smoother. So just like that. So I'm gonna show you a French knot, and these are pretty fancy. Um, I like them in particular for the insides of flowers, but they also just look pretty any old way you do them. We come in from the back, our knot will catch. It's best to have a surface for this one. You wanna take the slack thread in, your, in one hand and you've got your needle in the other. You wanna take your needle and push it up against the thread, just like this, and then wrap it around three times, two, three. Then you go right back into the fabric. I like to put my thumb right here, but you don't necessarily have to. I just think it makes a tighter knot when I do. And then pull it through. It makes that cute little knot. Show you again. Come in from the back. That slack in one hand, needle in the other. Bump them against each other. One, two, three. Just like that. So that is the French knot. This next stitch I'm going to show you is a chain stitch. Um, this is another favorite of mine. This one is good for flower petals, it's good for leaves on stems, but you can also do some really cute designs with it too. So it really is um, very versatile, but I'm going to show you the way I use it the most and that's in a flower. So let's say that this is our stem. You want to pick a place that's your center. So I'm going to pick right here as that's going to be the center of my little flower. Pull to your knot catches. I'm going to take the slack this way. So notice that the slack is not like this. It's always away from me when I'm doing this stitch. And then I'm going to hold this one down just like this with my thumb. This is going to go in right beside where you came out of. And this is where you determine the length of your petals or the length of your stitch. So let's say mine's about right there. We're gonna take this thread and we're just gonna put it around the back of that needle so that it looks just like that. And then pull. And then we'll put this needle right on the opposite side of that petal thread. And that will anchor this stitch. So it looks just like that. And then you just keep going. Let me show you again. Come through. I take the thread this way and my thumb is gonna hold it. My needle goes in and I'm gonna try to get the same length. The thread goes around the needle, behind the needle right there. Pull through. And then anchor it. I'm gonna keep going and show you how it ends up looking. All right, 
different. So if you keep going around, you end up with something like that. Um, this next one I'm going to show you is called a satin stitch, or I always call it a fill stitch, but I think it's correct name is satin stitch. And what a satin stitch is, is, is like, it's like you're filling something completely in. So this stitch is really good for, um, flower centers or just marking over, um, something on a fabric, make, creating a shape, um, filling in block letters. I'm going to show you how to use it on the inside of this. And you can see that I'm just a, a wee bit wonky here, but I can, I can fix that with this fill stitch. I will start on one side that might not catch and then take it to the other side. And then I just try to get as close to my stitches as I can and then put it back down right beside the stitch. And if you leave small gaps, that's okay. You can just fill them in later. But this is basically what it is, is you're just filling in a space. All right, so that's basically what that does. Let me show it to you in one other example because I always use it to make um, these little tulips. So let's say this is the end of my stem. Sometimes I'll put it like right here. So you can create them little flowers like that. So just a lot of options. So that is what five stitches that you can use. Um, there is a lot of other stitches that you could um, get familiar with. Um, these are just basic ones that I can remember. <laughs> and it's been a few years since I did much embroidery. There's so many stitches. Um, I will put some links to my favorite embroidery class um, in the blog post that accommodates this video. Let me show you some more examples. So this is a piece that I did a few years back that ended up not getting used, but I used that satin stitch or fill stitch and I drew the letters on with a water soluble marker and then just kind of filled them in with the, with the thread. I'm pretty sure I doubled up on my thread to get it this bold. You get how you can use that satin stitch to create letters. Um, this is one that I um, did, this is just a fabric it's a fabric with a bird on it. And I basically went around and outlined a few things in the design. So you can see my chain stitches right here. And these are all chain stitches here um, that it's outlined with the back stitch. And then there's a bunch of French knots just all over the place. Here's some more chain stitches that make little flowers with French knots as the center. Um, here's another one that I did that there was, it was already this little bouquet and I just kind of filled it in with stitching. So, these are back stitches. This is um, the satin stitch. Here's one of those little daisies again, and it's got a little French knot in the center. Bunch of French knots over here. Here's one that I did um, just on a piece of linen, and it's just uh, a bunch of back stitch and French knots. So those few stitches can, can get you pretty far. So that is it today. Thanks for watching.